I just sense a very wonderful presence of the Lord here today. Um, I have some service order and some notes and some things that I'm going to just abandon for just a moment or two or until I feel like it's time to move on. I'd like to do something different today. I, I want to, and you may be seated. I'm not going to dismiss our kids just yet. Um, but I'd like to have a representative, a man, from every generational decade. So somebody who's in your 20s, somebody who's in your 30s. And I'd like to, every generation, I'd like one person to come up and pray for our country and pray just what you feel in your heart the Lord would lead you to pray. So let me have somebody in their 20s. Uh, and then Josh, are you in your 20s? I elect you. All right, you just got voluntold. <laughs> Daniel, you're in your 30s, correct? You're already up here. I need somebody in their 40s besides me. Somebody in their 40s. Look, they all know you're at least 50, but you're coming, brother. Thank you, brother. I need somebody in your 50s, a man in your 50s, that you're going to pray and represent your generation to pray for our nation. I need somebody in your 50s. Rick, are you in your 50s? No? Are you? Are, are you you're still 40s, right? <laughs> are you 50s? Rick, I'd like you to come. Rick, I, I need you to come regardless. I, you, Rick, you mean so much to this church. Amen. I know you mean so much to God. Do we have anybody in their 70s that would come and, and, and pray with us today? Somebody in their 70s. So, I know, I know, I know. Let's see. I need somebody in their 70s. Come on, this is, this is big, guys. John, come on up, John. And now we're going to start running out of guys, but I think we got somebody, at least one guy here in their 80s. I, actually, I don't see Fred here. I need a man, if we have a man in his 80s. A man in his 80s. Do we have a man in your 80s? At this point, if you're 80 or older, get here. <laughs> As a man. I need a man. Do we have one in here? Somebody point him out. If you're with him and he's lying, point him out. <laughs> point him out. Who, who we got? Claude. Get up here, Claude. I knew, I knew I saw you today. Come on up here, Claude. Come on over here, men. And I'm going to start from the youngest, and we're going to pray to the very oldest. Now, guys, this isn't time to pray a 30-minute prayer, okay? But thank, you're representing your generation of this country, and you're representing the faith of these people. And I'm going to ask you fine men. Some of you have beards. Some of you don't. We got blue collar, white collar. But we have one thing in common. God's grace saved us. And I'm going to ask each one of you to pray over our country. And if you feel like you need to re repent for the sins of our country, or if you're praying for unity, but I'm going to ask you just to take a moment and listen to whatever you would feel the Holy Spirit would want you to pray today. And we're going to agree with you. And don't worry about being, don't, you're not Pastor Matt. You're not, you're not Andrea. You're not, you're, you, you are you. Don't pray like me. Pray like you. And if, you, if, your, if your words are raw, as long as they're heartfelt and sincere, pray and be you. Amen. Understand? All right, step up here, Josh. It's a white microphone, guys. Thank you. All right, let's pray. <laughs> Dear Lord, Lord, I, I stand before you as a man of the millennials in the age of 20, from 20 to 29, God. And I ask right now that's on my heart and in my spirit that the men of God in the age of 20 will begin to break through so that the other generations can begin to break out. In this place in America today, God, I ask and I pray that your spirit will begin to flow through us and in us to begin to prophesy and begin to testify of your name, to take a stand against the wickedness of the enemy, to call truth and to call lies and to take a firm stand 
on the right side of things, declaring things from the Word of God, by the inspired Word of God, and that we begin to walk in the dutimous power that you've called us to. Because this is the generation that you have called for this time and this moment to see your coming. And I pray, and in one thing, Lord, that I ask, and I ask with a repentive heart that you would forgive our generation for being immature and dropping the ball. And Lord, I just ask that you would just pour your blood upon us. And Lord, and be our father. No more father absent, God. It's a generation of, a, of a, we're just fatherless. But God, don't let us confuse a father with, like Pastor said, the father. Lord, let us be the men of God under the father. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity to come before your throne, Lord, and we just give you our everything, Lord, and I just pray for the men in my uh, generation, Father, and I, I ask God that you help us to not be apathetic, Father, that you help us to, to be bold and strong and confident in who we are as men, Father, and who we are in you, Father God, most importantly, and Lord, I just ask that you just help there to be unity among, um, about, among us 30-somethings, Lord God. Um, we're at that point where we're, you know, we're beyond our 20s, we're out of college and we're starting our families, Lord God. And I just pray, Lord, that you help us to be mighty men, Father, that you help us to be bold and strong and good leaders in our home, Lord, and that we'll love our wives, we'll serve them, Father, just like we serve you, Father. So I just pray, God, for your for your, um, your strength, Lord, and, and, and Father, your, your mercy on us, Father. And use us, Lord, raise us up, Father, for your kingdom. Dear Lord, I pray that you bring our country back together. I pray that you bring our families and make them stronger. Keep the men in our household. Bring my brothers and sisters from overseas back home. And I pray that you take care and love every single one of us. Amen. Dear Lord, I pray that uh, this world listens to you. We need you bad. And if we don't have you, we have nothing in this country, Lord. So please go and beat the hearts of people and speak to them. Because without you, we have nothing. Amen. Lord, I ask that you help every man, husband, father, grandfather step up, do the right thing, show the kids the right way. We ask that you just guard us and you guide us. Every uh, individual step up and worry about their house instead of everything else going on in the world. Just take care of your own. Lord, we just ask that you guide us and you guard us, Lord. Thank you for all our blessings. Yes, Lord. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you right now with a heavy heart for the world, Lord, for we see what this great country that you provided is going to. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you would look down upon our leaders, that you would guide them from our president to the vice president and to those in Congress that would keep this country great. Father, we ask, we ask that you would put a stumbling block before those that would destroy this great nation for their own personal gain. Father, for we know that, that you are still in control, even though we see the signs of the times. And Father, also let me ask you, Lord, that you would bless this generation that I represent. Father, for we are the ones who are to teach the future generations they come up. We have been through the experience. We've been through the fires. And Father, help us to encourage and to lift up those that are going through the times that we've never seen, that they may be strong. Encourage them, Lord. Father, bless their hearts and that they would bless you with their praise and their worship. Help us always to be mindful of you, Lord, through the good times and the bad, that you are in control no matter what happens. You are still in control. And Father, we'll not fail to give you glory, praise, and honor for all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, to start with, I, uh, I guess I can pray to the Lord for, for saving me of some of the things that happened during my lifetime. Uh, 
back in 1948 when a tornado went through Coatesville. Uh, our farm set in new line of that tornado. And uh, I remember I just got home from school that day and was doing my homework. I think it was a Friday, but I'm not sure. It's been a while back. So anyway, uh, my father looked out the window and he said, it looked like somebody's burning some old tars over there. I said, huh? And he said, yeah, that's what it looks like. And so I got up and looked out the window and, and uh, I was watching the thing and I said, Dad, that's not a tar. I said, that's a tornado. I said, uh, uh, if it was to burn no tars, it wouldn't be a moving. Well, anyway, I mean, uh, they watched it coming well farther, and there's a big barn. I'd say the wings spread out would have probably been maybe 50 feet. And I watched that, and it picked that rip off of the barn, and it went up in the air like a big bird. And when it got to the top of that, it looked like it had dynamite and it just exploded. So uh, I guess I was very lucky we lived through the thing. I, I could spend a good while talking about this, but uh, it brings back old memories, uh, some of the things that happened in my lifetime. But I just, the Lord just had his hand on me, or I wouldn't be standing here telling you this. In the name of Jesus, I thank each and every one for listening to what I got to say. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you, Claude. Thank you. I want to do one more thing. Josh, did Josh disappear? Where, come on over here, Josh. Come over here, Daniel. I want to take, I th we, we're going to do something. This, and, and I'd like you guys to stand right here. This represents our younger generations. Do I have a young man uh, in your teens that would be so bold to stand up here on behalf of your generation that we can pray for you and your generation. I know you young men love to come up. Uh, I don't want to pick on anybody, but if I could, if it's someone 17, 18, 16, I sure would appreciate it. And if, is there someone here that would be willing to do that? If not, just make your way up if you are, but if not, we understand. What's that? Dylan, come on down, Dylan, would you please? I know you're a good sport. We'd appreciate it. I don't know if you volunteered or they just voluntold you, but it would, <laughs> it, it would be a great help. And what we're going to do is I'm going to have these older guys lay hands on these two. Because one of the things, there has been such a spirit of division that's trying to attack our nation, and it's trying to separate us from whether you believe this about a virus or you don't believe this or whether you're black or white, rich or poor, red or blue. And there would even be those that would divide us where we have elderly people putting down our younger generations. And, and like Josh, you heard his beautiful prayer today. That's his heart. That's the heart of this younger generation. They don't need our older generations judging them. They need us mentoring them and discipling them and praying for them and loving them. Amen. Amen. And just as a sign of unity and, and to really, the other thing, we have to get this, these younger generations ready because those of us that are 50, you know, I'm not in that group, by the way, but, the, the, <laughs> no, but there, there's going to be a time, this is it. And I want to pray for these guys that they're going to be able to lead the church to their generation should Jesus tarry. Now, do I, do I think that there's a great chance that Jesus will come back in our lifetime? I never used to be that vocal, but now, yeah, you might not have to worry about it. But in case you do, <laughs> man, would you come and let's lay a hand, come on the back behind these guys, and we're going to just make us kind of we're going to stand behind these guys as they're the emerging generations well, let's lay hands on these fellas 
It's too bad we don't have better looking guys to represent your generation, young people, but <laughs> we did the best we could. <laughs> Lord, we do want to humbly right now lift up our younger generations to you. Lord, every, every generation since the beginning of time has looked at the next one and almost with critical eyes. Help us to stop criticizing these young people. And stop picking up them apart. And look at them with the same grace that you looked at our generation when we were foolish. And I pray that this generation is going to have the opportunity, should you tarry, to rise up and be strong, to be mighty, and to usher in revival and to see the power of God in their generation. We ask Jesus that you would move in our millennials, move in our Gen Z, move in whatever these generations are called. Quite frankly, I don't know. But Lord, we need you. And I pray as us older guys in the back, let us give our lives to being an example. Let us give our lives to encouraging and mentoring and admonishing and raising up and not tearing down. And I pray that each one of these respective generations, that our generation will know the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, men, for being up here and being vulnerable today. We're going to dismiss our children and our teenagers, and then as they go, we're going to sing one more time just one verse of that song. God bless you guys as you go. They're holding up green pool noodles over there for the children. Follow those out on both sides up balcony end over there. Men, I appreciate it. I know it's what every man wants when he comes to church. Put me up on the pulpit, or on the pulpit and make me pray. Let's stand to our feet and sing one more time. dedicate this service to you and as we continue into the hearing of the word of God we thank you for using me as your microphone and help us to listen with spiritual ears that we may understand and know the truth of your word and all God's people said amen you may be seated if somebody would be so kind as to remind me there are some important announcements I need to give later but I'm not going to give them now um, I also, I'm not going to give the offering now, but um, just know there's things more important. Just remind you to give. Um, I want to talk to you. Luke 11, 47 and 48 is our key text today. And the other formality is like, hi, welcome to Soul Harvest Church. And I'm Pastor Matt. Okay, but I feel like the Lord is just here in a wonderful way. I just want to move with him. Amen. Luke 11, and this is part six of our series, To Kill a Prophet. And 
I'm not going to get very far into my message today. I'm trying to figure out. I got four points. I'm going to, I'm going to get to preach one quarter of one point. By the time it's all said and done, I'm trying to pick which one that's going to be. But I, the Lord was just moving today in our worship. And that prayer time was just precious. And that was just sometimes, you know what? I can always come back next Sunday and preach. But when the Lord is here, we have to honor that. Like when he's moving like that, we have to stop. Woe to you is what Jesus said. He's speaking to Pharisees and Sadducees. For you build the tombs of the prophets and your fathers killed them. In fact, you bear witness that you approve the deeds of your fathers for they indeed killed them and you build their tombs. We've been teaching for five straight weeks on the role of the prophet. And at the same time, you know, I have a very important mandate as a pastor not just to give you biblical knowledge because knowledge puffs up but to, to give you knowledge in a way that you can take this home and put it into action Monday through Saturday so that you're not just getting a, a smart, but that you are learning to apply. And so why am I teaching the need and the ministry of the prophet? Well, one of the greatest things we have going on right now in our world is a great need for spiritual awakening. Not just spiritual as in all paths lead to heaven, but spiritual as in man's hearts are being turned to Jesus Christ. We know we have a great need. And we, when we read the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, we see that when God wants to cause an awakening that when God, whether he's responding to the prayers of the saints or he is moving sovereignly, when God wants an awakening, he sends a, a person with a prophetic message. Okay? And so, if we see in our lives today one of the greatest needs for an awakening in our country that we've ever had, then that means we have the greatest need in our country for the ministry of the prophet. The prophet is the catalyst for revival. The prophet is the catalyst for people's hearts being convicted and repenting. A ministry of a prophet, for instance, even the ministry of Jonah, when we study Jonah, it, 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 it's one of the most fascinating studies in the Word of God. Jonah, who operated under the ministry of prophet, even though he, his heart wasn't all that right himself, even though he had done some stupid things as a man of God, because he stood in the office of prophet, he was able to go to a very wicked and evil people, the Assyrians. You know where terrorism was invented? It was invented in Assyria. They were the ones who came up with this idea to strike fear. That's where it comes out of, the Ninevites. And Jonah, as an anointed prophet goes to these people who he does not like, goes a direction he does not want to go, but because the power of God was on his life, he had the ability to preach a message that was eight words long. I know some of you are wishing that anointing would come on your pastor. <laughs> eight words. And he called those people to repent. And without sermon illustrations, without juggling elephants, without cool praise and worship, because he was a prophet, the power of God backed up that message in an unshakable, undeniable way. And an entire 
region of the most wicked and abominable people had their hearts so changed that not only did they repent, they fasted for three days. And they didn't just fast. They made their animals fast. I don't know about you, but when you have pets or you have a farm, your cows will let you know when they're hungry. If, you're not, if you normally feed at 11 o'clock or 7 o'clock or whatever time you feed, those cows, they're there waiting for you. And if you're five minutes late, they're looking at you like this. And they're making this. You know, we live on the south side of Cloverdale. What's that? that means we wear our hats on the, you know. And somebody in this church has a cattle farm behind us. I won't say their name because I don't want to embarrass them. But it rhymes with Schmer and Sinclair. <laughs> And when they wean every, when they wean the calves, the three to five days, you do not sleep at my house. <laughs> Why? <laughs> 24 hours. <laughs> I have two dogs. Julia and Leah, I don't understand, but I, since we got these dogs, it'll be almost three years, we have yet to eat a meal without Julia and Leah staring at us. Please feed me. Please feed me. Please feed me. Please feed me. And, it's, and they don't go away. They, they don't. So what do you do? Why well, feed them? I'm getting soft, too soft. Well, they've made their animals fast for three whole days. Can you imagine the ruckus? They made their children. Your children can't go by a gas station without, Mom, can we stop? I, need a, I, I'm, I, I, I just have to have a soda. I just have to have a mountain. I just have to have a monster energy. Three days. That's the ministry of a prophet. You see. And so as we're teaching this message, the thing I want us to understand is I believe God wants to do a great work on this earth. I, I know that. And so one of the things we're going to have to understand as the body of Christ is that we have to realize that in Ephesians chapter 4, God set some in the body for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, and prophets. The fivefold gift. And we like the others because they make us feel good, but them prophets, they get out there and make us uncomfortable. Jesus was operating under the ministry of a prophet when he spit into the dirt and made mud. And put it in somebody's eye. I don't know about you, but I, I've seen some goofy things in church. But how many of y'all know that'd make you a little bit uncomfortable? I know we say, oh, no, that was Jesus. Listen, <laughs> if it's the first time it's been done, you, it is not. You're be like, what is going on here? But the reason I'm bringing this to our attention, because I think we need to be praying and we need to prepare our hearts to receive. Should God raise up the ministry of prophet through our nation to call us to repentance and to have a great power on their lives that we would see a national awakening? And I am hoping and praying that we would see that. And I would want you to know 
as we have discussed, there were three types of people that killed the prophets in the Bible. One was Pharisees and Sadducees. You know, there are some of you, we talked about generations. There are some of you that have actually worn bell bottoms the first time they were invented. And there are some of you that had beads on and You, your music wasn't bad, but, you know, that generation of, of the 60s that really went counterculture and, and kind of had questioned the authority and all those things. But you know what? There was a revival that was birthed out of that called the Jesus Movement. And all of a sudden, all these long-haired hippies who were getting high on drugs are getting high on Jesus. They don't have any hair now, but they had long hair then. <laughs> and can I tell you what happened? Not, not, in, not in all say, cases, but in many cases, as these hippies were coming to Jesus, some of the religious folk began to make it more about them cutting their hair and being churchy than being Jesus. Now, do I think, do I want to be all respectful? Sure, I'm, I want to look my best for God. I, I, yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, that religious group wants to kill the ministry of the awakening. And there were many of these, the other thing, there were many of these young people. I've had so many older pastors tell me this. They said, learn from the mistakes of our generation, is what these old pastors have told me. They said, when these young people came in and they were on fire, and they were ready to change the world, and they wanted to go to the foreign mission field, and they wanted to, they wanted to worship, and they wanted to have church all the time, the pastors came in, not all, but many, and said, now, 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 don't get too excited. You have your future to think about. You have your life to think about. And the revival, in some ways, was tempered, at the very least, by religion. And I, I'm, I'm talking about this. We feel this dire need for God to awake our generation. And we've, we've discussed this. I think we're getting I, I see little lights going on. We don't want just revival so that everybody else gets easier to deal with. We want revival because we desperately long for people to know God. Because this Jesus we have is so wonderful and so amazing and, and our salvation is so great and he took our sin and he took our, our, all of our, our, our hurt, he took our pride and, and even when we mess up, he continues to say, I forgive you and let me help you. And I, I think we have this longing and, 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 and what I'm seeing in so many Christ followers as they're raising up in your faith, and I see it in this church, and I'm proud of you for it, is I see you're not just wanting revival to make everybody else like you so it's easier, but you really long for their soul. And when, when you see the division of our country and when you see the hurt in our country, it's not just that it makes your life bad. It's that like Nehemiah, you remember what could be. And you want that for future generations. I am out there. I've crawled out on the edge of a limb that if I was to attempt to go back into my message, the limb would snap. But man, it was a good one. Uh, 
Um, sometimes you got to know when to walk away and know when to run. So what can I give you in a synopsis today in these few minutes that we've had to take with you? Our country needs an awakening. We need a prayer movement. We need a prophetic movement, and not prophetic like Goofy. Take, take Goofy. What? We've had so many bad examples of prophet, we're afraid of it, because we associate prophet with Goofy. A prophet gets results. A Goofy gets Goofy. Amen. And if you were raised in a goofy church, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. I want us to hunger and thirst for righteousness. And I want us to desire God more than the temporary things of this life. That's what a prophet is going to call us to. And when that, and, 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 and I want to be ready, I want to be revival ready so that when God does say, I'm sending an awakening, I'm sending a prophet, I want us to instead of saying, well, God is saving people that look like hippies, or God is all these millennials in here are driving me crazy. I don't want to lose it in our opinions. And I don't want to lose it in our criticalness. I want what God is doing, even if it makes us uncomfortable, even if it means we repent, even if it means we have to change our lives. And, and, and maybe, maybe, God is trying and like Jonah they're running. Why would they run? Because the religious people will kill them. Because it's not popular. Because it means you will lay your life down. But oh we desperately need it. All right. Um, last point, which isn't even one of my points, but it's just where I'm at, and then we'll, we'll wind it down. If you remember, we talked about three types of people in the Bible that killed the prophets. The religious crowd, the backslidden crowd, and the ungodly crowd. There's one major segment that did not kill the prophets, those that were hot for God. And I want to be hot for God, that when he is saying, okay, I want to send an awakening. I've heard the cries of my people. Where are we going to start? As he's looking at a map of the United States from a spiritual point of view, I want him to be able to look at West Central Indiana and say, I can send somebody there because those people are revival ready. So what would you do with this message today? Go out and love somebody who's unlovable. Go out and minister to somebody who hates you. Repent of your sin. Desire the things of God more than the things of earth. Look for things that unite us, not divide us. And above all, the ministry of the prophet points, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other way except through Amen. So that is my not message. It wasn't my message, but it was, we got it through. 
But we had church today. We had church. I've asked our worship team to extend worship a little bit these last few weeks because the Bible tells us that you put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And we need that. And he said, well, I didn't get the full sermon. Yeah, but you got the presence of God. And then that was 10,000 sermons. Amen. So let me just share a couple things um, as we go. My name is Pastor Matt Nichols. That was my wife, Andrea, on the keyboard. Welcome to Soul Harvest Church. If, seriously, if, if this is the first time you're here or you're newer here, uh, we love you. And uh, we, this church is 18 and a half years old. And we, we're going to keep going and preaching Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. And if you, you, you would ever say anything about me, I sure hope you would say that, that man loves God. And he loves his people. And he loves his wife and kids. Amen. If that's, you want to know me, that's it right there. But if you want to know me more, I'm having to meet the pastor today after service is over. <laughs> if you would, seriously, if you're newer here and you haven't had a chance to shake our hand and get to know us a little bit, Right after service, if you walk down to the teen room, just go start walking that way till you run out of room. They'll have refreshments for you, cookies, coffee, and we'll meet you for a few minutes. Our food pantry has been getting hit very hard. Um, if you, there's a basket out, or a, a shopping cart in our foyer. If you would think to bring food with you, non-perishable, when you come to church, it's helping us because we that thing we are going through it, folks. That uh, we're just seeing a lot of need in the community right now. So, if you would help us, it'd be great. I've been asked by our cleaning team, uh, who is volunteer, um, and they've had to do extra duty uh, during this COVID crisis. Listen, we, we haven't said too much, but they're going to all sorts of great lengths to make sure that this church is clean and disinfected and all those things, that you're safe. But what they've asked me to ask is if we could try to refrain as much as possible from food, especially up in the balcony area. It's very hard to vacuum up there because of the stair step. And if you could, look, if you've got a little toddler, I understand this. I had little toddlers. Praise God is what half this side of my gray hair is from. But, uh, you know, it's, if you, for those of you, you get a new car. If you're, if you're a soccer mom and you get that soccer mobile, just take Hershey syrup and just squirt it all over your seats. Throw Cheerios and French fries in there. Just get it over with because that's what's going to happen. But the best we can, if we can try to keep it a little nicer up there, uh, it will really help our cleaning team who's volunteer, and they are working their tail ends off trying to keep things going. Does that make sense to everybody? And that's not a, like a belligerent demand or anything like that, but just the asking to help. Baptism Sunday, September 13th. If you would like to be baptized, we will be having one right here Sunday morning, September 13th. We need you to sign up in the information room. And two more really cool announcements I need you to listen to. Um, as fall is coming, we know that our attendance usually goes up in the fall. Now, this is 2020, so who knows? You know, and, uh, but we, we also understand that the virus is a concern still. All right, so blessed are the flexible. But starting September 20th, we're going to two services for two reasons, um, 8.30 and 10.30, two services for two reasons. Um, number one, we were going to anyway before the virus hit because we were filling up and we were running out of room and everything. Now, the virus hit, knocked us back a little bit, but people are starting to come back in. And there are still a lot of people who say, I want to be socially distanced. And so by doing that, it's going to enable us to have a little more room to be able to do that. Now, we're only going to offer children's services, youth services, baby services during the second service at 1030. Okay, so 830 and 1030, they'll be exactly the same service other than uh, there'll be more at 1030 for the kids. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, if you're looking for a perfect church, keep looking. Okay? When we read the book of Acts and the first church develops, we see problems develop. 
and we trace the whole rest of the Bible from Romans all the way through Jude of dealing with problems in the church. God did not make the church perfect. He simply said, he is the perfect one we come to worship together. So I don't have it all figured out with the two services. I would love to have one service, but I'm not the, one, I'm not the devil who made coronavirus. Okay, so, and I'm not y'all who keep inviting people and people keep showing up, praise God, and we got to have room to put them. All right, so that's where we're at, okay? Second thing, be on the lookout for a date. We're working on, we think we have the date, but I don't want to announce it just yet because it might change. But we're going to have a praise night where we just turn our praise and worship team loose for an hour and have praise and power and just be on the date. It'll be sometime in September. I'm just trying to find a date that works with everything we have going on, okay? So that's all I've got for you. We've prayed. I'm going to have prayer partners down here to pray for you if you need prayer for any reason. And as you're picking up your kids today, thank those volunteers. Thank those people who work in that nursery. Thank those people who work back there. They love your kids, and they work their tail ends off, okay? So let's pray and be dismissed. Father, we love you today. Thank you for loving us so much. Not only did you send Jesus, not only did you send the Holy Spirit, but you continue to raise up ministries, you continue to raise up Christians around us to encourage us, and you continue to forgive us and empower us and grace us. We call right now on that grace as we go into the world. We call on that grace to live our faith. We call on that grace for our families. We call on that grace for our finances. We call on that grace for our bodies. We call on your ministering grace to lead others to Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. I love you. We're dismissed. <laughs>